Alright guys, so this morning uh, we had our Pokemon Direct, which this was our first big info dump on Pokemon Sword and Shield since the reveal back in February. So we got an absolute fuck ton of information to go through here, uh, more than I was expecting to get, honestly. Uh, I do have some notes in front of me because it's too much crap for me to remember. But anyway, uh, first off we're going to dive right in with uh, the new Pokemon that they showed. They showed a total of seven new Pokemon during this Direct. Uh, the first of which is a little sheep fella named Wooloo. It's normal type. Uh, its abilities are fluffy and run away. And they said that like whenever it senses danger, it just turns on its side and rolls away. And honestly, I love this thing. It's adorable. He's just a little round sheep floof. And the mental image of like a whole herd of these things, like seeing a lichen rock or something and just rolling away is hilarious. So I love Wooloo. I think he's awesome. Uh, next up was a little like the little feminine plant Pokemon that we always get. Uh, its name is Gossifleur. Grass type. Uh, two abilities. Either regeneration or a new ability called Cotton Down, which this ability apparently lowers the opponent's speed whenever it hits Gossifleur with an attack. Uh, they said that it blows around on the wind and uh, its pollen has a healing effect and can be used on both people and Pokemon. So it's the little, you know, we always get some sort of feminine looking grass type plant Pokemon. That's what this is. It's really tiny. It's got a big flower on its head. A big yellow flower. And then like a red part of the flower that kind of looks like hair behind it. Uh, it was fine. I thought it was cute. I, I tend to like the, you know, feminine grass type that we always get. So I liked it. Uh, they also showed Gus of Fleur's evolution, which is named Eldegoss. Again, pure grass type. Its abilities are the same, cotton down or regeneration. And this time, it's got like a, it's based on a cotton plant. So it's basically got like a fro made of cotton with little seeds in it. So I like this design a lot. I thought it was pretty cool looking. Uh, and it said that her seeds can be like dispersed onto the wind. And they're full of nutrients. So when they go into the soil, they help like enrich the soil and stuff. So it sounds like, you know, one of those general just helping nature Pokemon. But I really like this line so far of what they showed. I have a feeling that Eldegoss is probably going to have a, another evolution that they show later. I think it's going to be a three-stage line. I could be wrong, but that's kind of the feeling I got. So maybe we'll see an evolution for Eldegoss later. But so far, these two are first evolution family of this gen. And I like their designs. I thought they were pretty cool. Next up was a snapping turtle Pokemon named Dreadnaw, who is water and rock type. Abilities are strong jaw or shell armor. And I liked him. I thought he was cool. Uh, he's pretty large, and his shell kind of looked like it was made out of stone, which, you know, makes sense because he's rock type. They said uh, that he's actually pretty hard to train, dude, like his personality and stuff. So, a lot of times, trainers who catch him will end up releasing him just because they can't deal with him. So, I like him. I hope he gets, like, a really cool-looking evolution. Uh, I like the way he looks now, design-wise. But, I hope it just gets, like, a big, massive, badass-looking snapping turtle evolution. And if he does, I might actually end up putting him on one of my teams. You know, depending on what else we get. Uh, anyway... So next is another really cool looking Pokemon. I like this one a lot. Uh, its name is Corviknight. And it's basically like a Black Knight Raven. So it's a big Raven bird. This thing is massive too. They showed it like, you know, compared to stuff. It, it's huge. And it's got black steel armor all over it. And it just looks really awesome. I love this design. 
Uh, it's flying and steel type. Abilities are pressure and unnerve. And they said that it's known as the strongest Pokemon in the skies of Galar. And I don't know if this is the regional bird or not. Uh, it's obviously a bird, but I don't know if it's, you know, filling the role of like, you know, the Pidgey line or the uh, P-Dove line or whatever. If it is, then I would have to assume that this is the final form of the line because, like I said, it's huge and it looks just very complete in its design. So, if this thing has any evolutions, I think they're going to be pre-evolutions. Uh, it could end up being a standalone Pokemon like Skarmory or something. People are comparing it to Skarmory anyway because they have the same type. But, I really love its design. I'm I'm generally always a fan of bird Pokemon because birds just look cool. But I really like this guy, and uh, if it does have any pre-evolutions, I hope they show them pretty soon. So the last two Pokemon that they showed, besides those, those were all like, you know, regular Pokemon. Uh, the last two they showed were the version mascots. And their names are Zacian and Zamazenta. I think I'm pronouncing that right. They said them during the direct, and I still might be pronouncing them wrong. But anyway, the sword mascot is Zacian, and obviously they're both wolves. Uh, this one is a big blue wolf. He's got a sword in his mouth. And the other one, Zamazenta, is the shield mascot. And he's basically got like a mane that is made of steel and can turn into a shield. And he's a similar, both of them look really similar to each other. Uh, they got uh, pretty much the same color palette, a uh, little bit different shades. They're like mainly blue with a little bit of red and white on them. And then the, the metal parts on them are gold. So they look really similar. Like if you didn't know better, you'd think they could possibly be like different forms of the same Pokemon. But they are different Pokemon. Uh, they didn't give any types or abilities for either one of these yet. Now, the obvious assumption to make is that they're both at least part steel type, since they've got, you know, armor and sword and shield stuff on them. But I guess we'll find out later. Uh, another thing to note that at the end of the little CG pre-rendered cutscene thing that they showed, it showed both uh, Zacian and Zamazenta kind of changing form or changing modes. Zacian's sword like lit up blue and got like spikes on it and kind of like opened up on the end and then Zamazenta's mane like came together and formed the big shield and started glowing red. Now I'm guessing these are going to end up being sort of like the overdrive modes from the Gen 5 version mascots or the Radiant Sun phase and the Full Moon phase from Solgaleo and Lunala where they basically just start kind of glowing when they do their signature moves or whatever. I don't think they're full-blown, like, form changes or anything. I don't think we'd be getting that this soon. So I think it's more like the, the mode change, I guess, that we've had, you know, other legendaries do in the past. So that was the seven Pokemon that they showed. Uh, I really liked all of them, pretty much. Uh, Wooloo's probably my favorite out of this batch just because he's adorable. But I didn't really dislike any of the designs. The legendaries are very busy designs. They got a lot going on. But I do enjoy them. Uh, I, th I think they're all pretty good. I don't. I didn't really dislike any of it. So I'm on board with all of these so far. Uh, so anyway, some human news, non-Pokemon news. Uh, they did show some of the other human characters that we'll be encountering in the game. Most of it was pretty basic, you know, early game stuff. They did show the regional professor. Uh, her name is Professor Magnolia. Well, she's like an older lady, so it's, this is our first, like, old lady professor. Since, you know, Professor Juniper was pretty young. So we saw her, uh, we saw... Another woman named Sonia. 
who is Professor Magnolia's granddaughter and then also her assistant. And she's helping her study the, basically, what's going to be this generation's gimmick, which I'll get into that in a minute, but, like, that's their main focus of their research. They also showed the champion. We actually got the champion. I wasn't expecting to get the champion revealed this soon, but they showed the champion. His name's Leon. Uh, they said that he's undefeated and said that he's known as, you know, the strongest trainer in Galar. So he's extremely popular, you know, got a good personality and all that. So everybody in the region really likes him. Uh, there's already like a lot of speculation that, you know, they're building him up as too much of a nice guy and he's going to be end up like leading the evil team or something. But, you know, that's just speculation right now. Uh, he does have a Charizard. They showed a Charizard with him, so I guess that's his partner. Or one of his partners. That's the only Pokemon they showed him with. So, he's got a Charizard, and they said that Leon and Sonia were actually childhood friends. So, I guess they're around the same age. And then they showed your rival, or what they said was going to be one of your rivals. So, maybe we're going to have more than one. But, uh, they showed what I'm guessing is going to be your main rival. And his name is Hop. Which, to me, sounds like a stupid name. Maybe that's like a common name in the UK. And I'm going to get like a lot of angry people named Hop chewing me out in the comment section. But <laughs> I thought Hop was a dumb name. I'm sorry. Sorry to, sorry to anyone named Hop out there. But anyway, so he's your rival. Uh, he's also the younger brother of Leon. So he wants to end up being champion just like his brother was. Uh, he is your neighbor, he lives next door to you, and you and him are starting your journeys at the same time. So, you know, pretty basic rival stuff. Uh, he does seem like the friendly rival that makes everyone upset all the time. I, I don't really care. So, pretty basic stuff on all that. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. Uh, so anyway, the, the big news coming out of this that pretty much no one expected was the reveal of the gimmick, uh, this generation's gimmick. Yes, we're doing this again. And, you know, I've said before, I wish they'd stop adding new gimmicks and just expand on the ones they have. But, of course, that didn't happen. So, the gimmick this time is something called Dynamax. And basically what this is, is it lets your Pokemon become giant. They just grow to, like, giant fuck size, and they gain more power. Uh, I assume that means a stat boost. They just they just said, you know, become more powerful. So I assume some sort of stat boost. And they get, like, three little cloud things floating over their head, which uh, I, I'll get into that in a minute. But anyway, they're giant. They got the little cloud things floating. They gain more power, and all of their moves become what's called max moves. Now, uh, they showed two examples. Uh, one was on the website, and one was uh, during the Direct. Which a lot of this information, by the way, is coming from their site. Uh, a lot of little details weren't mentioned in the Direct itself, so you might want to head to the site and check out everything on there, you know, to make sure you don't miss anything. Uh, when, you know, links to all that will be in the description. But anyway, of the two that they showed, uh, the max moves, they showed a Grookey and uh, I think it was a Pikachu. And it showed their moves changing into the max moves. Which the max moves are more powerful versions of the moves. And they sometimes like gain added effects. Which the ones that they showed were, let's see here, I got them all listed out. So they showed... Uh, Thunderbolt becoming a move called Max Lightning. They showed uh, <clears throat> Growl, Taunt, and Light Screen all becoming a move called Max Guard. Brick Break becoming Max Knuckle. Uh, Quick Attack and Scratch becoming a move called Max Strike, which that was the only one I really got details on as far as like the added effects. But apparently Max Strike, uh, when it hits, it also, besides doing damage, it also lowers your opponent's speed. 
And then they showed Razor Leaf becoming a move called Max Overgrowth. So, based on that, what it sounds like to me is, like, each type of offensive move is going to become one of these max... Like, there's one max move for each offensive type of move, and then... I guess at least one that is just for status move. Like every status move they showed became max guard. So I don't know if all status moves will become max guard or not. But so far, every one they've showed becomes that. So that might be the only status max move. And then everything else is becoming something based on its type. So since Thunderbolt became max lightning, I'm guessing any offensive... Uh, electric type move would also become max lightning and then any offensive grass type move would become max overgrowth i'm assuming that that's me you know making predictions based on what we have i guess we'll have to find out later i wouldn't be surprised if like the legendaries or something end up having some sort of unique max move that's based on their regular unique move that they have kind of similar to how the z moves worked so i could see something like that happening but that's what this Dynamax is. Your Pokemon just gets big as fuck and gets more powerful moves. So, uh, they also said that it, just like Mega Evolution and Z moves, it is limited to once per battle. Uh, it also only lasts for three turns. So whenever you activate it, you do have a time limit. After those three turns, they'll revert back to normal. And they also said that it's only going to be usable usable in specific locations. So, you're not just going to be able to spam this all the time everywhere you go. Uh, as From what we have right now, the only locations they've showed it being used is uh, in the gyms, uh, in something called Max Raid Battles, which I'll get into all this in a minute, and in the multiplayer battles. So... I, since they're usable in gyms, I'd have to assume the entire Pokemon League is going to allow them. So when you're facing the Elite Four and the Champion and stuff, I'm sure you'll be able to use them there. And probably during like big, important story battles, uh, they'll probably be usable then too. But just like walking around and fighting random trainers and you know battling wild Pokemon and stuff like that, you're not going to be able to just use this all the time. So... They also say that the trainer needs to have an item in order to activate this uh, called the Dynamax Band, which is another, you know, wrist-worn little thing, kind of like the Mega Ring or the, the, or the, the Z Ring. Well, wasn't the Mega Ring, or Mega Bangle, Mega Brace, whatever the fuck the Mega thing's called. I think they changed the name between XY and Oris. But anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. So it's another uh, wrist-mounted thing. It's got a little screen on it that had the same logo that's the little uh, the little red and blue Pokeball symbol that's in the logos and in the gems and stuff. So I guess that doubles as like the gem logo and also the Dynamax symbol. <coughs> So, I'm sort of a mixed opinion on this whole Dynamax thing. Like I said, I wish they didn't introduce a new gimmick at all and just expanded on the ones they have. Uh, and your Pokemon just growing really big is kind of underwhelming and strange considering, you know, when you compare it to like Mega Evolutions or Z Moves or something, those are a lot more exciting than this. Uh, this is just kind of odd. Now, on the other hand, from a gameplay perspective, I think it could be really interesting. Because, you know, with, with a three-turn limit and the the different max moves, we don't have any idea how many of those we're going to end up with in total. So, I think it could have an interesting effect on how battles play out and, like, strategizing and stuff. So, that end of it seems cool. Uh, we also don't know if it's going to be able to work with Z-moves and Megas. Like, can you power up a max move into a Z-move? Uh, can you Dynamax your Mega Evolved Pokemon? 
we they didn't say anything about the Pokemon that you Dynamax having to hold any item. So if their held item slot isn't being tied up by anything from this, maybe you can mix this with the other gimmicks from the past. Uh, one thing about this, since it's literally just your Pokemon growing big, it's not going to require any new designs or character models or anything. So maybe that lends to the idea that we might be getting some actual new Megas and new regional variants. Because the gimmicks in the past, if you can't regional variant as a gimmick, uh, the ones from the past sort of artificially padded out the Pokedex since we got a lower number of new species of Pokemon in both Gen 6 and 7. But then we also got new Megas, which were new designs, and then we got regional variants, which were new designs. Dynamax isn't going to give us any new designs. Uh, probably, you know, <laughs> based on what we know now. So... Maybe that leaves it open to still fill in the more designs quota with new Megas or new variants. Or maybe they could just go back to giving us a larger number of new Pokemon. You know, the decks this time might add around 100, you know, to 110 new Pokemon instead of, you know, like 70 or 80 like the last few gens. So who knows, but I'm, I'm very mixed on the Dynamax thing. I'll have to, you know, actually get my hands on it and try it out in the game to kind of tell how I like it, but Right now, I could see it going either way, honestly. So, uh, th speaking of the gyms, we talked about being able to do this in gyms. They did confirm that the stadium-looking buildings from the original reveal, those are the gyms. And they showed the first gym leader, which is a dude named Milo, and he's the grass-type gym leader. Uh, they also said that the, all the gym leaders are going to be able to do this Dynamax thing. So when you're battling against them, you'll probably have to Dynamax your Pokemon in order to face them. So they're tying this in with the whole gimmicks. Since you're in the big stadium, you do have an audience watching you battle. And they said that the gym matches are broadcast over TV. So the Dynamax thing sort of ties into making the battle exciting and, you know, people want to watch it because it's it's basically like Pokemon Kaiju battles. So, you know, who wouldn't want to watch that? So the whole thing kind of ties together with the entire Pokemon League gym process. Uh, the only Pokemon that they showed Milo having was an Eldegoss, which is the one that he Dymax and made giant in the trailer. So, we don't know who else he has, but he does have an Eldegoss. So, anyway, getting off of the... Well, not totally getting off Dynamax. The other uh, big thing that they revealed was an area in the game called the Wild Area. And basically what this is, it's like a massive location in the game that like connects to a bunch of different cities and locations and stuff where it's basically just wilderness, and you can run around. There's a huge variety of Pokemon that are all over the place in the wild area. They said that the Pokemon available there changes based on both your location and uh, the weather. There's a dynamic weather. Well, I don't know if it's dynamic, but there is uh, changing weather in the area. So, you know, you go there one day and it's sunny, and you go there the next day and it's raining, and then there's a sandstorm, and then it's hailing. All, all the weather conditions are there. So, depending on what weather it is, whenever you go in, it's going to change what Pokemon are available to catch. Uh, they also did say that while you're in the wild area, you can control the camera. So you can look around full 3D, uh, or full 360, I mean... Which, you know, that, that, that makes it open world, which everyone talks about, which I'm, I'm not getting into that now because this video is long enough as it is. But, uh, so, it's a big area that you can explore and look around and do all sorts of things. So, uh, the other big thing that they showed during that was that there are some, like, weird looking stone monument things spread around through the wild area with, like, beams of light shooting up out of them. 
And if you go up to one of these things, you can participate in something called a Max Raid Battle. Which is a new battle form that they have on this. Uh, it sounds very similar to the Raid Battles from Pokemon Go. From what I've been told, you know, I don't play Go. But uh, this seems to be roughly based on that. Uh, it can be up to four players teaming up. And you're battling against a wild Dynamaxed Pokemon. So you're facing one big giant Dynamax Pokemon. Uh, they stay Dynamaxed the entire battle instead of only lasting three turns like it would in a normal battle. This wild Pokemon will stay giant the entire time. And they said that they also have other unique powers that only they have. They didn't specify what that was. I'm guessing it's something sort of along the lines of, you know, what the totem Pokemon had that made them a little bit stronger than a normal Pokemon would be. So it's basically a four four players versus a big giant boss Pokemon. As well. it's, it's a boss battle, sort of. And a lot of people were worried about this, uh, especially me, because... I, I tend to, you know, not want to deal with other people. If you, you can do, it's you and three other players. It can be local or online. But if you don't have three other players, then you can still do the uh, max raid battles. And they will give you NPC partners to fight alongside you. So it sounds like you still can do this single player and it doesn't have to be with other people. But if you have other friends in real life that play the game, or if you want to go online and play with other people, you have that option as well. And this will require the Nintendo Switch Online subscription, so, you know, if you don't want to pay for that, and you don't have anyone that you know who is also getting these games, then you should still be fine doing the max raid battles with the NPCs. So, that was my big issue with it, but it seems like that's resolved right off the bat, so... That's good. They also mentioned that only one of the four players will be able to Dynamax their Pokemon during the battle. And your Dynamax will only last the three turns like normal. So you gotta, you gotta kind of strategize, you know, when you want to use that to be able to beat this thing. And then they said that if you manage to successfully defeat the wild Dynamax Pokemon, then you'll have a chance to catch it. Which... The Dynamax animation, uh, they showed the female player character doing it. They got the little uh, Dynamax band thing. And what they do is they call back their Pokemon, and then the little band starts glowing. And the Pokeball basically grows into like a giant Pokeball that's made of energy. And then they just chuck the thing, and the Dynamax Pokemon comes out. Well, during the cat, they show the catching animation, and it's basically the same like giant energy Pokeball. And you just chuck it at this thing to catch it, and it sucks it up, and then it like drops down and makes like a big crater in the ground while it's shaking to see if you catch it. So I thought the catching animation was cool, but that that's the big like unique battle feature for this game, I guess, is these max raid battles, which they seemed interesting. They, you know, it's something different. You know, we'll see how it goes. Um. The other big news, which. People, maybe people's bag will finally be eased now. They showed that both in the wild area and I believe in other routes too, you will be able to have overworld encounters with Pokemon. So your wild po like in the Let's Go games, your wild Pokemon encounters, you'll see them running around on the field and you can walk up to them and initiate the battle. Now, if you're a person like me who don't give a fuck about Pokemon Go or Pokemon Let's Go or the overworld battles or none of that, then they're still going to have the random encounters in the grass, too, or caves or whatever you're in. So they basically did the best of both worlds and added in both random and overworld encounters, which I think is probably the best way to get close to pleasing everybody. Now, I don't know if the random encounters are going to work exactly the same as they have in the past because uh, they showed it happening in the game and it just showed like the player character walking through the grass and then a little exclamation mark popped up like near them. 
and you had to walk into the exclamation mark to make the random encounter begin. So it might be a little different than the random encounters in past games, but it's not totally the let's go style where it's just overall Pokemon walking around and you just run smack into them to start the battle. So they, they tried to ride the fence and please everybody with that one. And honestly, I, th I think it'll work out okay. I think they probably did the best they could in, in pleasing both camps on that one. I hope the... I hope the people who are dying for the overworld encounters to be back, I hope their bag is eased now. It probably won't be, but, you know. So we are getting that. Uh, the last big thing that they showed, <clears throat> which is something that uh, I'm, I'm hesitant about, they showed the Pokedex for these games, which is based on a fucking mobile phone. Because we can't get away from it for five fucking seconds. But it's based on a phone. And it's called the Rotom phone. Because just like with Gen 7, there is a Rotom living inside this thing. Uh, I hope it's, it's not as annoying as the one in Usum was. In Sun and Moon, it wasn't as bad because it didn't talk as much. But in Usum, like, every time you your screen changed, you know, post-battle and... After you open and close the menu, just all the time, Rotom was talking to you and giving you advice you didn't ask for and telling you all you need to save, even if you, like, immediately just saved right before he said that. And telling you you need to heal your Pokemon and all this stupid crap. Like, I, I know how to play this game. I've been doing this for over a decade. You, you, you don't have to tell me these things. So that was really aggravating in Usum, and hopefully that this thing won't be like that. I doubt it will since, you know, it's not the two-screen thing and he won't be taking up your bottom screen the entire time. So, hopefully it's a less annoying implementation. But we do have the Rotom phone as the Pokedex. Uh, honestly, the only thing I want to... Let him be annoying. Just put the National Pokedex back in. If this thing doesn't have National Dex, I'm gonna be pissed. I was pissed last year when it happened and I'm still not over it. So... Hopefully they just put the National Dex back in. I'll, I'll honestly just be satisfied with that. They also said that you can take this Rotom phone thing and attach it to your bike. Which, by the way, the bike's back. That, that should probably be news too. So you can attach this to your bike and it'll actually increase your speed and let your bike go faster. And it also allows you to actually ride your bike on water. Which is a weird choice. Uh, from the way that sounds, it sounds like Poker Ride might not be coming back. And instead of Surf, we're just going to be riding our bike across the water with the Rotom phone's help. <sighs> Which is weird. I'd, I'd honestly rather just ride around on a water-type Pokemon, to tell you the truth. Which they, speaking of Poker Ride, they also, when they showed off Corviknight, they said that they were going to be like a taxi service. That uses Corviknight to fly the player back to any town they've already been to. So it sounds like that's going to be replacing, you know, what would be your fly ride Pokemon. Which, if that's the case, I hope there's some kind of, like, Uber app on your Rotom phone that lets you call this thing whenever you want it. Because it's going to be really annoying if you have to, like, walk back to, like, if you're in the middle of the wild area or in the middle of a route or whatever. If you have to walk all the way back to a town and find one of these taxis in order to fly back to some previous town. So hopefully we don't have to deal with that and you can just summon one of these things through your phone anytime you need it. Because that would be a big step backwards as far as being able to fly. Since, you know, fly and the Charizard poker ride thing could be, could be used wherever you were at whenever you wanted unless you're you know unless you're like in a building or a cave or something if you're out in the overworld you could use it wherever you wanted so hopefully that doesn't end up becoming an issue but other than that last thing uh they did show the box arts which you know just had the version mascots on them and they announced that they're doing a double pack that is going to include a steelbook case 
So people that really love steelbook cases, you can get. The, I'm I'm not really a big fan of steelbook cases, so I don't know if I'll bother with this thing or not. Uh, it's the same price as the games individually, so it's not like any cheaper or anything, or any more expensive. And they did announce the release date. It is coming out November fifteenth. Uh, worldwide release, obviously, since you know we've been having that for the last few years now. So. I believe that's all the news we got. I've already talked for over half an hour now. My God. Uh, but anyway, this was a really good direct. I enjoyed this. Uh, it was way more information than I was expecting us to get, honestly. It really makes up for the, what, three months we went with absolutely no news at all. And it should help us hold over until the next big news drop, which I don't know when that's going to be. Uh, we should be getting Coral Coral leaks uh, here in a few days, but honestly, it'll probably just be regurgitating all the information we got during this. And then next week is E3, of course. But honestly, since they did such a huge info drop immediately before E3 happened, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they didn't talk about Sword and Shield at all during E3. And just focused on like Animal Crossing or whatever other games they're going to talk about. So who knows when the next info drop will be. Uh, hopefully it's not too long. Hopefully they start sort of like trickling out information now and giving us a trailer, you know, every two or three weeks or so. But anyway, I guess that's all I got to say. So lots of luck to you and yours.